Now, while it's true that we measure the movement of God in our lives through time, and if you're sticking with me, you, 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 you're going somewhere, you're going somewhere, you're going somewhere. Here's what I need you to understand about God. God is eternal. Now, the key is this. God is. It, let, let me help. God is. Okay, if time started right here, this is the end of time or the beginning of time, God was out there somewhere. Amen? God is out there. If time ends right here, then let me show you something. God is out there at a time when time exists no more. God is at a time before time existed. God is. And here's the other piece about this bad boy. God is like this. Not only is he beyond time at its beginning and beyond time at its end, God is also hammered and nailed right into the realities of our lives. In other words, God is there on the cross. From before the beginning of time, God was there sacrificing and giving himself for you that you would have what God has for you. At the end of time, when time is no more, we will be eternally with Almighty God. But right now, when you see God is right here for you, saying that I was nailed to the cross, that you might have life. What do you need? Understand this. Whatever you need, God has already seen it. Let me explain why. You see, if all of time is sitting right here, let me say something. God is looking at the whole thing, all of, all of time, right here. And God has this capacity. God can take a thought, see the end at its beginning. Come here, come here, come here. God, because he can see all time, takes a thought. And when God speaks it, he speaks the end at its beginning. God did not have to hem ha and wait for it to happen. God said what? Let there be what? And there was. When he saw that he was going to make a creation, he saw the end of it at the very beginning of it. And when he spoke, it happened. Now, here's how God operates. Because God can see the end and the beginning. He also sees the middle. Guess where you are? somewhere right here in the middle and when we come to understand God from the uh, God the way God sees time and we stop trying to press God to make God see time the way we see time we can then start to understand this that whenever something is happening the timing of it may not be what we wanted it to be but it's happening in the very perfect will and the perfect timing of almighty God let me explain it this way here we go I'm an early riser. I get up early in the morning. If it ain't 5.30, it's 6. If it ain't 6, it's 6.30, but I'm up. Amen? Now, what I like to do is I like to get up and I like to walk, Will. I get out and do some little, you know, exercise and do my little workout and walk and all that good stuff. Now, my beloved of 51 years, <laughs> she is a night owl. And she can stay up all night, and I can't, I can't make it past 10.30, but she can stay up all night long. But when she wakes up, here, here's some things that I've learned. I like to fix breakfast in the morning. So I do. But now when she wakes up, you don't fool with her until she's had one and a half cups of coffee. I'm just trying to tell you like it is now. I've learned a little something, Bishop, after 50 plus years. One and a half cups of coffee, at least 45 minutes to an hour in her big chair, and she's catching up on her reading and her social media. Amen? I'm just telling you how that goes. So, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. The way we deal with things are not in sync. Because her time is here. My time was way over there. Amen? But come here, let me help you with something. I always wait to fix breakfast until a cup and a half of coffee are consumed and an hour is spent in the big chair. Social media and devotions are all taken care of. Let me tell you why. 
It is because of the intimacy of our relationship that I'm willing to adjust what I do so that I can maintain the relationship and stay connected to the one I love. If I will do that for my wife, the God who created you is calling you that you would recognize that if it ain't happening when you want it to, just see that the God who loves you so much that he sent his son to the cross is saying, can you just wait? Y'all with me? If it's happening too soon for you, can, 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 can you hear God saying, now, now pick it up some, pick it up, you, you, you're falling behind. He wants an intimate relationship with you so close that you are willing and knowledgeable enough to know that you can change to meet God as God changes the world around you. Here we go, let me try something else here with you because that's, that's just time, Amen. Well, here, here. Another one is desires. Here we go. We say stuff like this, remember? That's not what I want to have happen. Or, or we say things like what, what I expected or what I was trying to get done or to have happen was, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I was reminded and I was listening to a teacher that I really enjoy and he was talking about Matthew 6.33. You know Matthew 6.33. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All these things will be what? Added to you, right? Now, now, when I looked at that passage, I realized as he was teaching, it's giving us something. You see, God has no problem with us enjoying things. The passage says all these things will be what? Added. In other words, you're going to get yours. Chill out. Isn't that wonderful? Somebody say, I'm going to get mine. That's what God wants you to understand. The passage gives the believer, though, something even more important. It is a knowledge of what to pursue. Ah, come on in here. You're going to get yours, but that's not what you need to pursue. He says, will you seek me first? Seek God and not things. It's not a matter of us seeking God to get something. Y'all, uh, that's not what God is saying here. He's, he's not saying, seek me to get something. God is saying something different. God is saying, look, your job is to seek me. That's God talking, right? And God says, my job is to get the stuff to you. <laughs> oh, don't you miss that. If this thing is going to work, God says, your job is to seek me. My job is to take care of you. Now, what happens, folks, is with this desire thing, may I? May I have your permission to be real for one minute? All right, give me a minute and 57 seconds. Here we go. God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We look around in the world around us, and we see the people around us, and we see folks that are getting it added to them. Now, let me say it again. It's getting added to them. We're looking at folks, and it's being added to them. And we start to get envious and jealous and we start to, st start to ask God now, wait a minute, if you're doing it for them, isn't it time you did it for me? And, and, and here's, the, here's the catch. We, we start to get jealous of folks and we start to even hold stuff in our heads. And let me tell you something. And we'll start to justify in our heads why they don't deserve it and you do it. Yeah, let me tell you something. Jealousy is a, is a bad boy. It's a, envy is something, man, because envy will tell your head anything to make your head agree with it. Are y'all with me? Now he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All these things will be what? Added to you. Very good, Lord. Now you're adding it to them, um, right? But what we don't recognize is this. Jesus, in the, in, the, in the book of Matthew, and you can look at it on your own, he goes through this long list of all these things that his disciples, his followers, his committed believers are going to have to sacrifice and suffer. 
you just used some bad language in the church, brother. We, we didn't come here for that. We didn't hear. We didn't come here to hear, pastor, about the fact that there will be, if I seek the kingdom of God, there will be times that I will have to sacrifice. I didn't come here to hear from you, pastor, that I will have to suffer sometimes as I seek the kingdom of God. And what we miss sometimes is this, that the people that God is adding to have sacrificed. We don't know what they've sacrificed in order to get what they have. We don't know what they've been through in order to receive what God has for them. All we see is that our desire is that I want it. Anybody with me today? Now, now, now here's the deal. God is trying to say something really simple to us. He's saying, I want you to have things, but I want you to love me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That makes me think of a blues song. I'm not going there, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I want you to have things, but I want you to love me. And God is saying this. I want you to have things, the material blessings, but here's this. Here's what he wants you to know. The purpose of your material blessings is to glorify God. The purpose of your material blessing is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ so that all men, women, and children and all the nations in this world will be drawn to Jesus and made disciples of Jesus Christ and so that the kingdom of God will be right here on earth and we will make more of the kingdom of God here on earth and hatred will stamp that out. Racism will stamp it out. Oppression will stamp it out. Violence will stamp it out. He gives you money. He gives you things. He gives you resources that you would work toward God's. Let, let, me, let, me hear, let me hear this. Thy kingdom come, thy. On where? As it is. That's what he wants. He gives you that, that you would make heaven right here on earth. Not to use on yourself. So he says... If you're going to understand change, you're going to have to understand that your desires need to be, God says, for God. Amen? Here, let me share this last thought. The last difficulty we have with change in our lives is trust. We're talking about alignment with God's plan. See, Moses was so aligned with God that when the change happened, it did not knock Moses off his feet because Moses trusted God. May I take a trip back in the annals of time and give you a definition of trust? If you will allow me, I'm just going to go back. Some of you know it, you can even recite it with me. Trust is a set of expectations based on observed behavior. One more time, trust is a set, of a set of expectations based on observed behavior. I can trust anything I can watch long enough. I can trust a rattlesnake. How can you trust a rattlesnake? Because trust is not about mushy, mushy, he's going to take care of me. Rattlesnakes don't take care of nobody. But I can trust this about a rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes will bite. And if trust is a set of expectations based on observed behaviors, if I, and I don't have to be bitten by a rattlesnake, enough people have been bitten by rattlesnakes that if I see one coming, I'm going to get out of its way because I trust it. Now, some of y'all are saying, Pastor Moody, I can apply that to some folk I know. And, and, and amen goes there. Amen? Amen. Apply it. That's what God wants you to do. Moses is not shaken up. Moses is not broken up. Moses is not thrown out of kilter because God has made a change in his life. Moses trusts God enough that he knows even the change, if it's disappointing or not, is good for me. Well, let me, let me try to close this thing up and give you a little example of something. There was a little boy, and he was uh, on the soccer team. He was going out for soccer practice and all that. And he told his mommy and daddy, I want a soccer pro. They told his grandmother, little Joey wants a soccer pro. Now, a soccer pro is just a little device that you put on the instep of a hood's kid, kid's foot so he can kick the ball this way, sideways, instead of kicking it with his toe. Every kid wanted one because they were all playing soccer. And little Joey wanted a soccer pro. 
Christmas time comes around and little Joey is asked by his parents and the friends that are there for the gathering of the Christmas party and all of that. They say, well, little Joey, what did you get? He said, oh, I got some new video games. I got a new console. I got some new clothes. And I got a soccer pro. Well, his mom looked over at his dad and his mom said, hey, you didn't get a soccer pro. And the dad said, I don't know why he's saying that. A day later, somebody asked him, little Joey, what'd you get for Christmas? He said, oh, I got some video games, a new console, some new clothes, and a soccer pro. His dad looked at his mom and said, hey, we're going to have to do something about this. A week later, somebody asked him, well, Joey, what'd you get? For he said, I got uh, some new video games, console, some new clothes, and a soccer pro. His mom and dad finally took him to the side and said, now, baby, look, we know you wanted the soccer pro. But the fact is, you didn't get it. He said, oh, yes, I did. He said, oh, yes, I did. They said, no, no, no. You, you didn't get the soccer pro. He said, yes, I did. He said, now, nah, you guys need to know, I got it. Mom and dad said, well, look, I, 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 we know that your grandma didn't send it. He said, grandma said she was going to send it, so I got it. They said, and in fact, little Joy said, you know what? I better go thank grandma for my soccer pro now. And the mom and dad are still just a little bit befuddled. They're a little bit confused by his behavior because they said, he wanted that thing so bad, he doesn't even know he ain't got it yet. Well, well, here's what little Joy did. He sent a text message to grandma. He said, grandma, I just want to thank you for my soccer pro. You're, such the, you're just the greatest grandma in the world. I'm so glad that you're my grandma. I have such a relationship with you, grandma, that I just want you to know how much I appreciate you, how I extol you, how I magnify, anybody hearing this, how I magnify you, how I glorify you. Grandma, I want you to know that I have total trust in you, and I thank you for my soccer pro. And grandma wrote back to him and his mom and dad and said, well, I want y'all to know that I did order Joey's soccer pro. They were on back order. It'll be there this week. I'm trying to tell somebody that when it comes to change in your life, the things that are happening are not happening. Please recognize this. You can trust the God that loves us so much. How do I know? Based on his observed behavior, how much does he love you? He loves you so much that he sent his only son to die on a cross, an excruciating death, suffering that you might have life. You can trust God if he would give his son for you. He'll sure give you what you need, when you need, how you need it, where you need it, through whom you need it. Just trust this God.